hello. Uh, for those of you who are willing to listen, all right, I'm just going to put a few things out there. The reason why I'm making this video is to get a few things off of my mind. And at the same time, uh, you don't have to watch this video if you don't want to. I just want to put a few things out there that have struck my attention. Uh, one of those things obviously being uh, Ferguson, Missouri. I'm sure a lot of you already know what the media is putting out there is not true. Okay, one of, you know, I could be wrong on this. I could be wrong. I don't really think any of us really know what happened there except for the people who live in Ferguson. Um, I have a feeling that the police officer and the person that supposedly got shot, I have a feeling that those people were either paid to cause an outrage or they simply never existed like the Boston Bomber. Those Boston Bomber people uh, with, with, the bo with the bomb that went off at the uh, Boston Marathon, those people never existed. There was an entire CIA operation, an entire drill that went on for like 12 hours before that bomb even went off. They That was, you know, the Boston Marathon, that wasn't just, that that was planned by basically the entire government as an experiment to see how people would react under martial law in Boston. You know, obviously, people, they sucked up to the government and let them kick their doors down and ransack their houses and stuff. But now, you have Ferguson, Missouri, an area that's not as, uh, you know, where people are a little more free-spirited and kind of do what they want. <laughs> Uh, it's not as uh, a good neighborhood. Now the government wanted to see, this is just my opinion. I think the government wanted to see how people in a, in a, a badder neighborhood would react. So, they stage another event. They stage another event that is going to make people mad. You know, they want to make you mad. That's one of their primary goals. They want you to react. That's what they want you to do. They want you to try and attack them because they know they have the power and the force, the weapons, and they have the National Guard, they got riot patrol, they got all these these people who are not working for God. They have all these people who are practically working for the devil. Alright, you're either working for God or you're working for the devil. Or you could be working for the world. It's like if you're an atheist where you don't really believe in anything, you could be working for the world. But in the end, that's not acceptable. God's going to ask you, you know what I mean? He's going to ask you why you've done the things you've done. He's gonna, he's, whether you are a soldier in God's army or not, you're still going to have the answer for the bad things that you've done. And you might have the answer for the good things. I don't know. However... My belief about Ferguson is that they want to put more areas under martial law. So now this police officer uh, supposedly wasn't charged for killing somebody. Now that right there, I want to say something about that. If you or me was to go out and kill somebody, we're, there's a good chance we could spend the rest of our lives in jail. But yet, it's okay for a police officer to go and kill an innocent person and at the same time be able to resign from his job. Now, at the same time, I don't even know if, if he was a real police officer. He could have just been some... See, that's the thing. When you're dealing with television and you're dealing with the media, these people... That guy who, who they're saying is the police officer, for all you and me know, he could be someone like myself who the government came to and said, listen, we'll pay you 300 billion if you, uh, if 
you work with us to stage this event. Here's a script, you read the script, and then as like six months goes by or whatever, you know what I mean? Then they keep writing more scripts and they keep coming up with more stories to outrage the public, to make people angry. And I don't know if you're aware, but right now, Ferguson, Missouri, if you're walking down the street, uh, you know, there's a good chance the government could just shoot you with a rubber bullet and say that you're a threat. I mean, when you deal with the government, these people are not here to protect you. <laughs> these people are not your friends. They're working for the devil. Here in Philadelphia, I notice a lot of spiritual things happening in my own life. All right, I noticed that the uh, events that happen, you know, just, you know, stuff that happens between you and your friends, stuff that happens just within everyday life. Life in general, at least for myself, is getting more extreme. Within my mind, the battles in my mind within the last three years have gotten a lot more extreme. The battles with people on the street, just conversations, life in general is becoming more extreme as time goes on. And I'm sure you've noticed that yourself. What's next? Ask yourself. I ask myself sometimes what the government could pull off next. You know, are they going to... They're already spraying stuff in the air. But are they going to spray something in the air that makes millions of people sick and say that it's a terrorist attack? Are they going to put something in the water? More stuff than they're already putting in the water. They're already putting <laughs> chemicals like to rot your immune system and rot your liver. It's all documented, too. That's what's funny. It's all documented. I tell people about this stuff, and they look at me like I'm nuts. But yet, it's all documented information. So you think, let's say here in Philadelphia, and they can easily put this entire city under martial law in less than 24 hours. All they got to do is stage an event. All they got to do is come up with a story for the media because I noticed the media every time one of these events happen the media is what's promoting it like Ferguson for example and the Boston bomb if they wanted to televise that nobody would have knew about it the only people that would have known about it would be people like you and me who were recording this stuff with our cameras and putting live information out there you know what I mean? Like, if it wasn't for the media, the truth would have gotten out there years ago. But these TV networks have a very complex way of wording their sentences. And they have a very persuasive personality. They're very good at that. i got to give them credit. You know, I'm not saying they're good people or I'm not giving them any kind of good credit. I'm just giving them credit saying the fact that they do their job well. They work for the devil and they're doing a great job confusing people and keeping the truth from getting out. Because a lot of people sit in front of their TV sets day after day and they're constantly updated with more and more lies. See, I myself, I don't watch TV. <laughs> I mean, the only kind of TV I watch is this computer system here. Stuff I see on there on YouTube, stuff that people send me, you know what I mean? That's the only kind of television I watch. Don't ever believe what they tell you. Those newscasters, those people that work at NBC, they work at CBS, ABC, whatever. They get paid a lot of money to word things in a way that will make you believe something that's not true. They get paid a lot of money to convince the public into thinking that the government is trying to do good things rather than bad things. But if you really 
really, if you take a step back from that and don't listen to the media, that's when you really, you know, that's when God really starts to make you question. That's when he starts to point things out to you. And when you turn all that off, and when you start living in reality, and just focus on your own life, and ask God for wisdom, Wisdom and guidance. That's when you really, really start to see things in a different perspective. Like I myself, I can only speak on my own experiences. Uh, two nights ago, I just happened to overhear President Obama speaking about Ferguson. I think it was about two nights ago now. I just normally I don't even listen to what he has to say because I know that it's it's all it's all gibberish. However, I noticed a lot of what he had to say people think it's good, but a lot of what he has to say is about taking control of the public and basically locking down the city of Ferguson. That's, you know, basically what he's speaking about. People think that oh, oh they're here you know, while people are sitting there in front of the television screen thinking, oh, okay, he's, he's speaking, they're here to help. They want to they control the situation. If you listen to the way they word things without looking at the screen, that's the key. If you just listen. If you listen to a television program without looking at the screen, that's when you start realizing, like, whoa, do you, that's, that's really worded complex. You start really realizing how, you know, how detailed how much detail they put into things. Like that script that Obama was reading, they probably wrote that four months ago. When all this stuff, you know, when all this was a little new. They probably wrote that script three or four months ago and they just released it the other night. But I notice a lot of what he's having to say is about locking down the city and taking the freedom away from people. But he words it in a way that makes it sound like he's here to help and like he and his administration care about the people, but really it's the complete opposite. If you ever, you can do this on the computer if you want to. Any random television show, like something that's on the air now, just bring that up, but don't watch the graphics. Play the sounds, but don't watch the graphics. If you listen to the harmonics, like the music that they play, and of all the words, of all the ways that they could make a character, they choose to make them a certain way, and the music that they use. You know, whenever they use music in a television show, it kind of makes you feel a certain way about what's happening on the screen. you got to understand these things. It's very important. The music that they play, and the words that they choose with the graphics that they're it really messes with your head okay I, since I don't watch any of this stuff I'm gonna give you a good example the other night about four nights ago actually more than four about five nights ago just for the hell of it I went to Fox 29 that's a, a new station here in Philadelphia I went to Fox 29 and I just happened to watch uh, one of their little broadcasts about the neighborhood and all the crime and stuff. And I'm like, I'm out there on the street every single day. I mean, yeah, I've got my ass kicked a couple times. Yes, I've, I've had my fair share of problems. But the way the television, the way these networks make it seem, they make it seem like the world is a... Like, you need to be afraid. Like, you need the police to, to, like, to keep you safe. When I know first-hand experience... Cops are not your friends, okay? <laughs> I trust a drug dealer on the street any day over a police officer. Now, the way they speak, they make it seem like they talk to you like you're a baby. Today is going to be 45 degrees. Take Prilosec, you know, like, I always, <laughs> I always say Prilosec OTC because that's one of the commercials that's funny. Another one, it says, uh, what is it, Walgreens? Come to Walgreens and be happy and healthy. Like they, uh, the way they word things is just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. So now, you think the people who are sitting in front of the television day after day are being updated and they're constantly being talked to like a baby by the newscasters, by the president, by all these people. It's almost like they become like Big Brother. 
And that's part of the mind control. The shows that you watch, every five minutes you have commercials. So now, let's say you're in front of the television for five hours. If you're in front of the television for five hours a day, every five minutes you're going to be seeing commercials about corporations. And at the same time, you're going to be hearing stories about bad things that are happening in the neighborhood. And I notice all the commercials are about drugs, like pharmaceutical drugs. Uh, money. Money's another thing. Like, everything on the television consists of money. It's like every five seconds on the television, something has to do with money, or they're talking about money, or how you can get money. And, and the television really makes you focus too much on money. I mean, my life, just me personally, my life, I, I money, it's very rare that I have money. <laughs> It's very rare that I ever have more than five dollars in my pocket, at least in the last five months anyway. It's but you see these people on the television, they all have to have the fanciest cars. They all got to be wearing fancy clothes. I mean, this shirt right here, I think this shirt's out of the trash. But you know what? It's a good shirt. There ain't no holes in it, and it keeps me warm. <laughs> Along with the other shirts I put on underneath. Yeah, I dress in layers when I'm outside and it's cold. But I notice these people on the television, they always want you to have the most fanciest things, the most expensive things. And you think people who sit in front of the TV all day, that's what's going through their mind. It's almost like in their mind, they're under the wall. They're under the government's control. And in their mind, money is a, a way bigger thing than it is like in someone like myself. So I don't watch TV. And it's very rare that I ever have any kind of money. <laughs> so, that's the difference between how someone who is always watching the television opposed to somebody who's out in the world. See, I myself, I'm used to living by faith. Every day I wake up, I don't really have an agenda. I don't really have any kind of... Uh, plan as to what I'm going to do with today. Some days I do, some days I don't. But overall, I ask God to guide me to wherever He wants me to go. I ask God to guide me and to give me wisdom along the way. Okay, I go a lot of different places. I sleep a lot of different places. I meet a lot of different people and I do a lot of different things. Half of those things that I do, I don't know why I do them. I just feel as though that's what God wants me to do. Whatever is going through my mind at that very second, it's there for a reason. It's not just a random thought. It's not just your mind wandering in the distance. A lot of things that you think about, uh, you think about them for a reason, a spiritual reason. I'm going to give you an example. Let's say you're riding a bike down the street and you just happen to see three kids who, uh, you know, they got uh, they got their hats on crooked and, yeah, they're, they're just with the modern culture. You have a decision right there. If you don't know who they are, you have a decision in your mind. Do you look at them as a friend? Or do you look at them as an enemy? Some of the most basic decisions that we have to make right on the spot are some of the most important decisions that you make in life. And in order to make those decisions properly, you need God's wit. I always try and look at people, if I don't know them, I always try and consider people brothers and sisters. I try not to look at people as enemies. I used to. That used to be a very big problem in my head, but... That's one thing God has helped me get past. It's easier for me now to look at people as brothers and sisters rather than enemies. Because we're all soldiers. Now the way I see it is everybody in the flesh, every person is a soldier. And they have to decide who they are working for. Are they working for the God of peace or are they working for the devil? It's as simple as that. And once you make that decision, that's what your life is going to be about. If you work for the devil, negative things are going to happen around you. Negative things are going to happen in your life. I know this from experience. Negative things are just going to come out of you and come out of your character. 
Okay, there's I there's times in my life where I haven't always been with God and where I have done a lot of dumb things. I'm not going to get into that. But uh I I I didn't always work for God. I'll just say that. However, I work for God right now. Okay, God has cleared my mind. I'm not perfect. But one thing I realize is that God has cleared my mind from a lot of things. A lot of problems I used to get myself involved in. A lot of things that I used to do, I don't have the urge to do anymore. Basically, God has freed my soul. If you can understand what I mean by that. God has freed my soul. That's one thing that I can truthfully say. Is that God has freed my soul. Not a lot of people know what that feels like. Hey, when your soul is free, you have a lot more decisions, you know, that you have to make. A lot of people look at me, <laughs> a lot of people look at me like, like my life is easy. Which it basically is. I can't complain about my life at all. But they don't realize how many decisions I have to make. How many circumstances that I find myself in on a daily basis, just every day. A lot of people don't understand how they don't understand how extreme your life becomes once you decide to become a soldier in God's army which is what I am and I hope that's what you are for your own safety for your own sake your life becomes very extreme and things just just the things that happen around you the circumstances that happen in your life your thoughts your thoughts your mind is the battlefield your mind, that's mainly where, you know, mainly what gets intense is your mind. Because you always have to discern, where's this voice coming from? Where's that thought coming from? If I do this, where's that going to lead me? If I do that, what's that going to do? You know, because there's always a cause and an effect. I myself, ever since... Uh, at least within the last three years, I have to say, things have gotten very, very intense on the spiritual level. And, uh, you know, I don't mean that in like a scary way or anything, just as more of an awareness for everybody who can see my face right now. There's probably not going to be many of you, but if, if you're listening, God bless you. Thank you for taking the time to listen to what I have to say. Because we all have opinions. It's just a matter of listening to other opinions. That's mainly how you gain wisdom, is when you listen to what other people have to say. Now, I found just within my own life that uh, the decisions you have to make on the spot become more intense. There's a lot of times when you have to make a decision within thir like within 15 seconds. 20 seconds. Sometimes there's decisions that you have to make within two seconds. Like if you're riding the bike and some guy in a car is, goes to a red light or something and almost runs you over, you know what I mean? There's a lot of decisions that you have to make and a lot of times you don't have time to make them, you don't have time to think about them, you just have to make them. And I gotta say, that is what God has helped me with most. You know, God has your back. The Spirit has your back. And I gotta say that... You know, that's probably one of the most comforting... One of the most comforting feelings that you can ever feel in life is when you know that the Spirit has your back. Because I'll tell you straight up, a lot of people in this world, especially in this day and age, do not have your back. People who you call your friends, 
You may think they have your back, but do they really? See, that's one thing I always look at. I have this person's back. If something happens, I will do anything in my power to protect them. But will they try and protect me? I will help this person any way I can. But will they ever help me? And I have to tell you, there's a lot of people out there who truthfully don't give a crap about you or anybody else in this world. They really don't care. Just within like the last couple of years, that's one of the things I've been looking at within people. No, I shouldn't even say within the last couple of years. Within the last couple of months, rather. You know, because... You know, you may... You may think people are your friends and your brothers, but half the time they really don't care about you. They really don't care about themselves. A lot of them, they care about possessions. They care about material things. They care about money and their habits. But they don't care about you. And they don't care about anybody else or what happens to anybody else. There's a lot of people like that. I myself, I'm not like that. I won't allow myself to become like that. There's days that I wake up and I feel like that. But that's when I start asking God for wisdom and I ask God for guidance. I always bring my thoughts to God. No matter what they are, whether they're good or bad. I bring them to God and I explain them to God. And I ask God to help me make sense of these thoughts. Help me make sense of these emotions that I'm getting. Help me make sense. Help me understand this energy that's around me. This strange, unknown vibe. You don't know where it's coming from. You don't know who it's coming from. You just know it's there. That's when you ask God. And you'd be surprised some of the understanding that you get. A lot of times, God won't say something to you. He'll just show you in your own mind. He will literally make you see. He'll just give you understanding. Because when you talk to God, you're not talking to somebody like I'm talking to you right now. It's not mouth to ear. It's spirit to spirit. You can't control what happens to you, but you can control what happens inside of you. So, when you talk to God, you're talking from spirit to spirit. There's no way He can misinterpret something you're saying. There's no way.